Hey everyone, it is Erin Melton. So excited to be here again today and just absolutely a delighted to have one of my people that I've been admiring from afar on with us, Andrew Gadosh. Andrew, thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Hi, Erin. How are you? I am, I am doing great. Even better now because I have the real live neighborhood mayor uh, slash Easter Bunny extraordinaire with us. So That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, so very good. Andrew, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into real estate. Yeah, so um, I originally was, uh, I had a lawn and landscaping business while I was in high school and I uh, was, you know, saving like a lot of uh, high school kids for college and uh, yeah. it kind of took off. We had, we, we started, you know, expanding pretty heavy into the neighborhood and um, basically I was fortunate to get a full uh, scholarship to play at the University of Dayton basketball. So I had this money saved up for college and, um, you know, what better way to to spend it was on real estate. So I ended up buying a few properties around the school, around UD and renting it out to people that I knew that were going to school there. And and I, it kind of evolved into, you know, me having an interest in getting my real estate license. My mother was uh, back home where, uh, where I was from and she was interested in getting her license. She was very successful in Mary Kay at the time. And okay. uh, yeah, it was kind of interesting. Uh, you know, she was a hustler as well. And so I, what happened was I, tore a ligament in my ankle and coach basically said, Hey, you need to go home and uh, recuperate a little bit. So I went home, mom said, Hey, I'll pay for your class if you go with me. So that's kind of how it all started. We went, got our real estate license together. She, um, she immediately started selling. I went back to school, started dabbling with it at, uh, at, at the university. And um, that's really ever, that's the only job I've really ever had outside of summer jobs. That's awesome. That's that's really exciting that uh, your mom and you uh, went it together. Um, our son is in the business as well, so I can Great. definitely relate with that for sure. So, what would you yeah, say, a, Andrew? Really cool. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, Go sorry, ahead. It's, just, it's, a really, it's a really cool uh, thing for a for, you know for a family to you know it's a family business. And fortunately, I'm able to work with my dad now. My mom's kind of retired, but yeah, pretty pretty cool stuff. So, very 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 cool. What would you say, Andrew, is your why? Yeah, you know, it's it's changed over the years. You know, I've been in the business now 24, 25 years. And um, initially it was all about, um, you know, money and self-sufficiency and uh, buying the things that I originally wanted. Uh, I'm a right. lake rat. You know, I, I love the water. And so the lake house was on my first, <laughs> first goal, uh, I guess, vision board. And then sure. uh, everything else that went went with it. So, you know, it's evolved. And like many people, then starting a family, then you work for your family. And now it's all about, you know, kind of really creating a passive income in a retirement down the road and, and helping mm -hmm. our helping our agents do the same thing. I mean, that's really mm -hmm. kind of what my why is, is how many people that I can kind of share um, my experiences and help them create wealth along the way. And what I found is that, you know, the more you help others, the more, you know, you get what you want in life. And that's not why you do it, but it's just kind of a natural law of um, the universe. It is. It is. And it's, I'm so excited to be surrounded by so many people that have recognized that and see that that's exactly the way it is. So. Yes. Talk to everyone a little bit about becoming a neighborhood mayor. Yeah, so... You know, our it's been somewhat of an evolution in terms of how we got to where we are uh, initially. And I always tell people, you know, align your job with what your passions are. And, um, you know, I was in real estate. I was selling in a smaller town. I had a Remax franchise. Uh, things were going great. We were number one market share in terms of individual agent team. And um, and yet there was this lake that I that I lived on in Ohio and I was selling in Indiana. And um, so when I moved out there, I really kind of wanted to stay away from the real estate because I, I enjoyed just being me. You know, I didn't have to, you know, always be on like we are sometimes. Well, my natural personality, you know, I'm a connector and I like people and I'm social. You know, we we basically I think the first night I was on the lake, I, I met three or four of still some of my long term friends. And um, we started, you know, I started having get togethers. Hell, I, I, you know, I was 22 years old and Hey, come over to the house and let's, let's throw a party. Let's throw a cookout. Well, what had happened was 
it really kind of started connecting the community where the community didn't really have that fabric of connection. Right. People knew right. each other in certain aspects, but it was only the people that were really involved in, you know, the politics of the community or, you know, running the community or, or your neighbors or whatever. This really allowed us to create an environment where I felt like, hey, we're really kind of bringing people together. So that then um, the neighborhood mayor basically is a culmination of all the years of, of us naturally growing that um, social network in the neighborhood and us capitalizing on that relationship with our real estate. Because what ultimately happened was agents were, or people were saying, hey, Andrew, can you help me with, with my home? Well, yeah, of course. You know, it's not where I really specialize, but okay, I'll do that. Sure. Sure. Then we kind of switched gears and I realized it was a lot better to be showing properties and my shorts on the boat on a Sunday than it was you know, in Richmond, Indiana at an open house. So it started to evolve. We started to document it, really focus on it. And, you know, here we are today with our neighborhood mayor program and we're training lots of people around the country. And um, mm -hmm. it's really helped us, our personal business, do the same thing. And that is, it, it's so amazing that you so amazing had that foresight that and ability to share that with others and how that really is helping other people as well. What would your adolescent self not recognize about Andrew today? Um, you know, it's, it's a great, that's a great question. And I, I think probably my adolescent self would, if the question, and I think the question was, would not recognize about me today. Is correct. that correct? Yes. Okay. That's why, um, you know, it's funny you say that because usually I get asked, what would your adolescent self tell your adult self today or right. your adult self take adolescent self, I should say. Um, I think probably that they recognize the, the focus that I have on abundancy and the focus that I have on passive income. Uh, you know, I think we're all kind of caught into a situation where we were brought up, you know, in a different time where my parents were able to save their way to retirement. Um, right. They made good decisions. And, and fortunately, my mom and dad had the foresight to buy rental properties. They didn't buy a ton of them, but they had, you know, four or five that, that, you know, us kids, you know, my dad would always joke, hey, that's the whole purpose we had you guys is so you can work on our rentals. Right. But, um, you know, it was just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was definitely a side hustle. Nowhere right. did it dominate their life. You know, they they just had a few here and there. And um, but I learned from that that, you know, there's an opportunity. Well, their goal was to save as much money as they could, um, pay those off and um, hopefully have enough of a nest egg in the bank to retire when they're ready to retire. Well, mm -hmm what's happened is, you know, the value of the dollar uh, has been diminished. Um, you know, to be a millionaire back in the eighties was significant. Now it's very common. Um, you know, you, you and what's going to happen in the future with one out of every $20 in circulation today has been printed in the last six months. You know, our money is not going to be worth what it is today. And, you know, I ask people all the time, you know, what, how much money do you need to retire? You know, and this was, this was my big, uh, jump to a change in philosophy on where we were with um, where our former brokerage and going independent and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, when I started to really understand that, you know, the average person is going to say, oh, I need, you know, a couple million bucks, you know, to retire. Sure. Well, if you really look at it and you say, okay, uh, the average person in investment years is going to get about a 4% return on their investment. And you mm -hmm. basically multiply that by a couple million dollars that's not a whole heck of a lot to live off of if you're used to a lifestyle where you're making some pretty good money and exactly. you can see their faces yeah. just drop. You know, it's like, Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, you're right, Andrew. You know, I can't live off, you know, $60,000 a year, or, you know, $70,000 a year. Well, the reality is, is that it's even worse than that because that's today's money. What's going to happen when that money is worth only half, which is going to happen in the next 20 years. So I guess, to go back to your question, um, I, Andrew Gadosh of my former years would probably be um, surprised that my total mindset on saving and accumulating my savings to retirement has shifted. And now it's all about how do I create opportunities from the income that I'm creating in real estate to purchase other uh, revenue sources uh, down the road that maybe I don't have to work so hard. It's amazing. It's that's yeah. just so great. 
the answers that I get to these questions every time are just something so, I take something from it, I know everyone else does as well. So what does being part of EXP and being a honey badger, how does that make you feel? Well, you know, the honey badgers, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of like a badge of honor. You know, we, um, yeah. for, I don't know if you know, but it kind of goes back to Jay Kinder and I met, uh, we were 30 under thirties and I was coming back for a reunion. He's a little bit younger than me. Hey. And, um, I remember, I think I was, I had just hit it. I was like 29 and he was like 24. No, actually, I think he met him in 23 or something crazy like that. Right. Um, I know what happened was I was I was a 30 under 30 at 29 at like 32 or 33. I came back for the reunion we had in Chicago and Jay was there. And uh, I was like, man, here's this young, cocky, you know, number two in the world, you know, Cobo Banker agent. And um, of course, we hit it off and had some late nights there and enjoyed our each other's company in the clubs. But, you know, it was fun. We had a good time. But by by that, I got to know him and understood that, man, he's doing a lot of things I'm doing. He's just taking it to the next level. So I followed him for a couple of years and then really called him and said, Hey Jay, you know, I, I need to help. I want to go from a hundred deals to, you know, 200 deals and what do I need to do? So by joining that mastermind that he created, you know, that was the beginning stages of those, was the first couple of years of, of the NAEA, you know, we kind of formed that, that honey badger group. So I feel like I'm a, an OG in that whole deal. Exactly. And, uh, it's, yeah, it's been, it's been great. We've had some good times. Uh, relationships. You know, I was on the phone today with Jay, uh, you know, just, it's just, um, as you found out being part of a honey badger, the honey badger network goes way beyond EXP. You know, EXP Absolutely. is the greatest you know mm -hmm. platform out there that we have to sell real estate. And then you leverage or you layer on top of the honey badger network and all the resources and everything we have, it just blows you away. Yep. No, that is, that so, is for sure. You've had a lot of success up to this point. What would you say, would you at, say is really important to you at this stage of your career in your life? Yeah, I think um, it's, I, I guess really it's just helping others kind of collapse time. And that's really, really what, you know, I see people doing some of the things, thing, same things that I did. And I was fortunate enough to jump on the coattails of a lot of people that had made mistakes prior to me, or, or I was going down the same path, you know, you know, Al Stasek, um, a dear friend of mine, you know, he, I, I watched him go from, uh, you know, growing his team and we were pacing with him. I'm a little bit more conservative. So he was always the first one to jump and we were kind of pacing with him. He would do it. We would do it. We were always six months to a year behind. And then for him to um, go through, you know, the, the stuff that really we looked at and why we joined EXP was the opportunity piece. He he went through a period of time where his team was jamming and doing really well. And then two or three of his top agents left because there was another opportunity that they felt was stronger than what Al had to offer. Right. And that is kind of what happens a lot in a lot of these teams where, you know, you're, you're creating a great environment, but yet, you know, if you got a, a, you know, a very dominant agent that's coming up, sometimes, you know, they want to go and do some other things on their own. The opportunity is there. The other teams or other uh, companies are paying them to leave. And right. we didn't have right. what we felt was that opportunity piece that was going to be greater than everything else. So when we were creating, Al and I were creating our own real estate network trust that we were going to allow our agents to buy into over time. Uh, when's the last mm -hmm. time you, you, know, you went to a retirement party for a realtor? It doesn't happen. Nope. Unfortunately, <laughs> You know, we end up going to funerals is what we do. And I hate to say that, but yeah. hell, I've been in the business 25 years and I started I know, yeah. so young that, you, you know, you see that. Well, with that being said, it um, that was the precursor for us really looking at how do we create that opportunity for us to have our agents rise with the tide with us. And um, that's exactly what I think our focus is now is how many people can we help do what we're doing. And in, in return, when, like I said earlier, when you help enough people, you end up helping yourself too. So that's, it's been a pretty cool thing when, you know, when your agents come to you and they're in tears going, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm not, I've never had this much stock in my life, or, you know, I've right. never had this opportunity to, to meet these kind of people or do these kind of things. I've never been on a catamaran and, uh, you know, in the Virgin islands before, you know, all this stuff that we're experiencing because you're surrounding yourself with just 
top notch individuals that are willing to help you. Yeah, no, that are always pushing you to challenge and just about the week that you're like, okay, I'm getting into these new things and I'm getting more comfortable with it. And it just seems like every week there's something else that I'm like, okay, I'm feeling really uncomfortable again and actually embracing that and going, this is a good thing. And it is, it's just surrounding yes. yourself by people that you always in your local markets, you'd think, okay, I have these people that I work with. They're really successful. And um, that'd be great to get to that point. But just it, the level of what is success and what happens when everyone collaborates together. And you don't have to, I love that how you said about collapsing time, that you don't yes. have to go through the, the hamster wheel all the time, trying to right. figure out and recreate things. It's like you go, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. And you have these people like yourself that are like, yeah, no problem. I'll get on and tell you exactly what I do. And you're like, okay, do you know who I'm not? You know, <laughs> so, thing. so it's just, it's just amazing. Well, Andrew, thank you again so much for coming on. I really appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to getting an opportunity to meet you on that catamaran one day for sure. Yeah, well, let's do it. Um, you know, make sure you jump on that neighborhood mayor's group. It's a private Facebook group on, on Facebook. Um, neighborhood mayors, um, is what it is, plural. And um, yeah, we're going to be launching a lot of new a new stuff for uh, the opportunity to kind of chronicleize and document the new things that we're doing this year. It's pretty cool coming out of COVID. It's um, it's going to be like the Roaring Twenties again. I mean, people are ready exactly. to get out and have some fun. So we're looking forward That's to right. seeing you. Thank you so much, Aaron. Anytime, you, anything again. I can, you just give me a call. Perfect. Thank you. Have a great day, and thank you again. All right. You too. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye.